Hello, this is Bob McClellan. This screencast is the fourth in a series about Spreadsheet ML, part of the OpenXML document standard. If you've not seen the earlier parts of the series, you may wish to review them at the links shown. In particular, part three is also about pivot tables and should be viewed before this one. There are no code examples in this screencast, but you can find those in other blog posts on openxmldeveloper.org. Just look for Bob M. In this part, I will be showing more about the layout options for a pivot table. So let's get started. This is the spreadsheet that I'll be using as an example for this screencast. You can see we have a couple of row labels, region and product. The region is north and south, and then there's a list of the products under each region. And then the column labels, we have year and quarter. Then the values are the sum of the total and sum of unit price. And you can see those repeat for each quarter. Because there are two uh, data values, there's also this sum of values item, which I'm going to talk about as we look at the, the layout of this as well. In order to look at the XML, I'm going to use the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Sto Studio 2010. And this package editor allows me to easily look at all the separate parts in the document. And so I can go right in to look at the pivot table. And I covered a number of these things in the previous part. But uh, if we look at there's a number of pivot fields defined, but I want to just review the that I have my two data fields, the sum of total, sum of unit price, and you can see that on the call fields I have those three values, including the labels for the data fields that I was showing you that, that had the sum, uh, had that sigma next to it, sigma values. Uh, and then the row fields, there are two of those. So one of the easiest things I can do is change the order. I can just switch them around. And go back to view it. And so now you can see over on the rows that product comes first and then region. And, and that is all it takes to determine which order these, you know, which one comes first. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, changing these row fields completely changes this part here under row items, which shows the hierarchy. I could switch back and forth to explain some of what's going on here. Uh, this V1234, sorry, and how that relates to the items that appear in this row. But because it is updated automatically by refreshing, I don't think it's really worth spending the time going through that. Um, the first thing I'm going to show then is how we can move this field. I can just make some simple changes here. I'll just move it uh, into the middle of the two column values instead of at being at one end. So to, so we go to here. Now you can see the hierarchy has changed. The sum of total, sum of unit price, which are those data value labels, I'll call them, they are showing in between the year and the quarter now. Then I can also go back and shift it up one more. And now it's at the top. It's the first thing. It's the the sum of total, sum of unit price, then year, then quarter. So you, you can see how that order, the order of those of the field values within call fields and row fields, are going to change the hierarchy in the viewed spreadsheet. So it's changing the layout. So how do you find out what all these things are? In fact, let's uh, look at something like 
column labels and row labels that are in there. You see those headings? The way I'd find out what those could be is by going to the standards document, looking at the pivot table definition section, and it shows me there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's top level attributes, the location, which is where where the pivot table lies in the spreadsheet. There's fields, there's fields on the rows, the items, which are the kind of the part I said updates automatically, fields on the column and items, fields on the report filter region, which I haven't looked at too much yet, and the values. And then the style for the overall overall styling for it. And there's a lot of information in here about how each of these things appears. You know, how how they look when you define one thing or another. I'm going to, you can of course look at that yourself. I'm going to skip down into the actual reference material. You can see there's a lot of different cases. So let's look at those. Uh, you can see there's a lot of child elements, but uh, even more there's these attributes. These are those top level attributes for the pivot table. And there are a lot of interesting ones. Um, there's, I'm going to go down here, find it, okay, so there's call grand totals, for example, and that says whether or not the grand total should be displayed for columns, and it's 0, 1. Let's take a look at that. I'm just going to start with that one. I'll get back to these labels. So are we getting column grand totals? I look over here, and yes, see there's the grand totals at the end, the total, the total sum of total, total sum of unit price, grand totals. So I should be able to turn that off. So I'll go up to my top here, and I can look at the attributes here and see that there is not one yet, so I'll put in Make sure I get the name right. Call grand totals. And say no. Zero. Now we look, and they're gone. Sure enough, it really works. So let's find this value. If I look, here's a call header caption. It says, specifies the string in column header in compact mode, which I'll talk about that in a minute. That is what we're using right now. I'll show the difference between the different modes. So I should be able to do call header caption. Again, I'm just glancing to see if it's in here already. My columns. I forgot to close it here first. That's occasional conflicts if you don't do it just right. Look, it changed it to my columns. So just wanted to show a couple of those. Uh, I'll mention some of the other options in here. And also, uh, show how I'm going to show right now how this also can be found in Excel. So. You can see I've looked at quite a few of these. They're in alphabetical order, and they go on and on. I'm not going to go through them all. <laughs> that would be time-consuming and tedious. Instead, I'll, I'll show that just what I was doing is I would look at what's here. I say, oh, I think I could change it and look for the value. The other way you can do it is you can change it and then see what the resulting XML is. But there, And so... One of the ways you can change things like this grand totals is by going into the pivot table options. And if I look at, let's see if it's in here. No, I don't see it here. I know where, it, I think I know where it is though. But you can see there's a huge number of options in here. And here's the one, well, it, yeah, see, it has them described exactly opposite. <laughs> This one says call grand totals, which means is it going to have grand totals along with the columns and, and with the column headings. And this one's saying 
it's showing grand totals for each row. So just watch out for slight differences in description there. But otherwise, uh, you can find a lot of options in these pivot table options. A lot of these are going to be in the, uh, or maybe all of them are going to be in that top level attribute. So a lot of these options you can also find uh, in the pivot table tools part of the ribbon. Uh, the same options for the pivot table can be found there, but you can also find uh, subtotals, grand totals, options that and then there's compact, outline, and tabular. I wanted to show these. Right now we're in compact. Outline uses different columns for those for each of the fields in the rows. Oops. And then tabular shoves them up next to each other. So these are just other options. You can find all this information in the standard. And you can work it either way. You can try changing something in in the XML and seeing how it com comes over into uh, Excel. Or you can do it the other way. You can change it in Excel and then look at the XML. One thing that can be really handy for that is the productivity tool that comes with the OpenXML SDK. Uh, if you save your spreadsheet, make a change, and then save it again, and you know, make the change in Excel and save it again. You can compare the two to see what attributes or elements have been changed in order to implement that. Now, some changes are not so easy. Uh, they involve a lot more, and sometimes it's not exactly clear what needs to change. And I'm going to show how to move the data the label for the data values from from the columns to the row. So I'm going to take it out of here and change this count to 2 and add it into the row, change this count to 3. Now through looking at the documentation and doing some comparisons between what Excel changes, as I described before, using the productivity tool. I also discovered that we need to uh, specify the data on rows attribute. It says very specifically, when using that field representing multiple fields in the data region, which is what I'm trying to move, then I have to also tell it that the data on rows is 1 because I moved it to the row area. So I'll do that as well. Let's go right up here and set that to 1. Oh, still had it open. I save that. And it says it's unreadable. So I'll go back. And after, like I said, with some experimenting, I discovered that apparently this is just too big of change for these row items, even though they can be generated. It doesn't like, it gets too confused, I guess, I don't know how to put it, to have them in there. They're, it's too much of a change. But they're, like I said, it will generate them, and they're not required. And so by taking those items out, it now shifts. You can see that it shifted the labeling from columns to rows. Now, that said, even though I got this to work, we're now getting into areas that become a little gray. It's dependent, possibly even on which version of Excel is reading this file. So you have to be a little careful and do some more careful testing with the versions that your users are going to be using. It might be a little riskier making those kinds of changes. And uh, But in my experience also, uh, pivot tables generate those items anyway and so it's no there's no harm in having them be removed uh, the other alternative is to go to the standard dig in to the items I go up here and I can find column items and here's you know that 
the call items explaining how it works. It gives the information here and you could generate it correctly. It's up to you. I've found that it doesn't need it, you know, that the Excel will generate it for me. If that was more critical for you, you could go through the trouble of generating them. So that concludes my part, final, the second part out of my four parts on pivot tables. There is one more to go that I think is important to cover with Spreadsheet ML, and that is charts. So uh, I believe I can cover that in one, one more screencast. So that will be the final installment on Spreadsheet ML, which will be charts. So stay tuned, so to speak. <laughs>